you're ready to enjoy your hot tub. You get in and you start to notice some really disturbing things. And you realize that you may have put too much chlorine in your hot tub. So what actually are the dangers of putting too much chlorine in your hot tub? That's what we're covering in today's video. Hi, I'm Jeff Campbell from Hot Tub Owner HQ, and I'm glad you're here with me. So first, how much shock do you actually add to your hot tub's water? I like to add about a half a capful. I'm gonna do that right now. About like that, just toss it in. Normally, I would put my jets on right now and kind of get that going. I have my jets off, I actually have the whole power off to my hot tub because I'm making this video and I don't want the noise to kick in while I'm recording. But that's about the right amount to add. And you'll want to add that amount about once a week. And the only exception is if you have a period of extra heavy use. Like sometimes my kids have a bunch of friends over and there's like seven or eight girls in here and they've all got perfumes and you know maybe dyed hair and, and body lotions and things like that. You can bet I'm shocking my hot tub the very next day because of all those extra contaminants in the water that wouldn't normally be there during normal use. So then in that case, it's okay to go ahead and shock it the next day and then just continue to stick to doing it once a week. Now it is important to point out that shock is not the only way to add chlorine to your hot tub's water. You also have sanitizer. Now, if you've watched any of my videos, you know that I prefer bromine sanitizer instead of chlorine, but you absolutely can use a chlorine-based sanitizer as well. So you are adding both of those things to your hot tub. Chlorine sanitizer can be liquid, powder, or tablet. I do prefer tablets. Again, I prefer bromine, and I just put them in a floater. You can kind of see my floater back there at the back of the hot tub. I just put, you know, like maybe five or six bromine tablets in there about once a week. Chlorine tablets you can put in there also, but you may find that you need to add them more frequently because chlorine breaks down faster in hot water. And if you have an in-ground hot tub that doesn't have a cover, sunlight also breaks down chlorine faster than it does bromine. So again, you may have to add chlorine sanitizer more frequently, but still stick to that once a week schedule for hot tub shock, whether you use a chlorine-based shock or a non-chlorine-based shock. So what actually happens if you overshock a hot tub? First of all, know that high chlorine levels can actually cause rust, particularly in the pump, which is located down here inside of your hot tub. It can actually cause your pump to rust out, in which case you'd have to replace it. Guess what? That can be a little expensive. But if you're using a calcium-based shock, like Cal Hypo is a very common one, that added calcium that's now in your hot tub's water can actually clog your filters and your plumbing. And if you have too big of a clog, it's gonna prevent enough water from getting into the heater tube. That's gonna trip what's called the high limit switch, which is actually gonna deactivate your heater as a safety precaution. Then you're gonna notice your hot tub's not hot anymore. So all of that can happen just by using a calcium-based chlorine shock. No surprise, but high levels of chlorine can cause bleaching of clothing, bathing suits, that kind of thing. Could also cause bleaching of your headrests. If you've got someone with bleach blonde hair or other kind of dyed hair, it might actually turn the hair green, especially if it's bleach blonde hair. And then it can also cause skin irritation. In a minute, I'm gonna get into the health issues related to high levels of chlorine in your hot tub. Real quick, if you like this video, smash that like button for me, destroy it right now. It sends a great signal to YouTube. They help me grow my channel and reach more people. And it's a great way to say thank you to me for taking the time to make this video. A lot of people ask the question, does hot tub shock increase the pH level in a hot tub? And the short answer is no. It absolutely does not increase it. It actually decreases the pH in a hot tub. And that's true whether you're using a chlorine-based shock or a non-chlorine-based shock. It will lower the pH. So what do you do then? Well, you can add a pH increaser, but if it's just a tiny fraction low, just turning the jets on will naturally aerate the water and cause the pH to increase. People also want to know if too much hot tub shock can cause your water to turn cloudy. And the short answer is yes, it absolutely can. But it does it in a few different ways. For starters, chlorine-based shock, even if you add the normal amount, 
can sometimes take up to 24 hours to clear. That's why a lot of people recommend waiting 24 hours after you shock your hot tub before you get back in again. That can be how long it takes for the chlorine levels to actually normalize. If you do non-chlorine based shock, then you don't have to worry about that. You really could get in almost right away, but certainly within 20 minutes. But for those 24 hours that you're waiting on your chlorine-based shock, you might see the water cloudy. But because of how chlorine interacts with the other chemicals in your water, pH like we just talked about, that can actually cause cloudiness in the water as well, especially if you're heavy-handed and overdo it with the hot tub shock. So how do you know if your hot tub levels are too high in terms of chlorine? Well, the easiest way is just to dip a test strip in and check it. Let's actually check mine right now. I haven't checked it in a while because I haven't used it in a while. I'm just gonna dip it in about two seconds, take it out, shake off the excess, I'm gonna hold it up here so you can see. You can see actually my chlorine levels are actually a little bit high. It's not really chlorine though, it's bromine because I use bromine sanitizer tablets in my floater. And most recently I've been using a non-chlorine shock. So that's actually bromine, not chlorine there. And you can see the alkalinity and pH are actually on the low side. So I need to add an increaser for those. But the other way that you can tell is you can take your water to Leslie's Pool Supply. They will test that for free. They'll give you a printout and tell you exactly what you need to add to get your water perfect. And if you have their free app, you can drop off the water in their convenient self-serve drop-off box and then pull up that information a couple hours later on your phone. I walk you through everything you need to know about how to get that set up at Leslie's. And again, it's a free service because ideally they want you to buy the chemicals from them, but you don't have to. But if you want to watch my video where I walk you through step-by-step step exactly how to get that set up with them, check that video out right up here on the screen. But you might also notice a strong chlorine odor. And that doesn't always mean that the chlorine levels are too high, although it certainly can. Sometimes it means that you need to shock your hot tub because the chlorine that's been in the water has now turned into a byproduct called chloramines. And sometimes that will give you an artificially high level on your test strips, but it won't actually be sanitizing your water, which is dangerous. That's why it's good to get in the habit of shocking your hot tub once a week, just like clockwork. But when you smell super strong chlorine odor, that can sometimes be chloramines because they do have a much stronger odor than regular chlorine does. So what happens when you have way too much chlorine in your hot tub. First of all, as I mentioned, not only can it rust your pump, it can actually cause corrosion in anything metal-based in your hot tub. That could be pipes, could be your heater tube, could be anything else in your hot tub that is made of metal. It can actually cause corrosion on all of those things. No surprise, but high levels of chlorine can actually cause deterioration on the underside of your hot tub's cover because especially if the jets kick on, which they do sometimes when the filtration system kicks on, and that can just kind of spray the underside of the cover with your hot tub's water. And if the high levels of chlorine are present, that can actually deteriorate that cover much faster than it would otherwise deteriorate. Now, I mentioned earlier at the start of the video some health issues that can arise from getting in a hot tub with high levels of chlorine. So skin irritation is actually one of the mild ones and you might see red blotches on your skin it might be itchy and red it might be really uncomfortable really high levels of chlorine can actually cause nausea and even vomiting and if you have that you should absolutely get out of that hot tub immediately because that means your levels are way too high and you might also find difficulty in breathing. And if you see those symptoms, don't be afraid to call 911 because it's better to be safe than sorry. Extremely high levels of chlorine in your hot tub's water or even bromine can definitely cause some of those symptoms. So you do wanna take them seriously. You don't wanna just sort of hope they go away on their own. Don't be afraid to call 911 or call your doctor or go to an urgent care to get checked out. Again, better to be safe than sorry. Now, if you want some help in deciding whether you should use bromine or chlorine-based sanitizer, I want you to check out this video on my channel right up here where I walk you through all of the pros and cons of both so that you can make the right decision for you and your hot tub. But for now, I'll see you in the next video.